my name is Nick Powell and I'm the Northeast and I'm the Northeast Community Engagement Manager for Asthma and Lung UK. Excuse me a sec, get that back on the screen. Um, just a bit of a disclaimer before I start, I'm not medically qualified, so I can't give any uh, sort of clinical or medical advice. I can't make any diagnosis or any prognosis or offer uh, sort of any medical hints and tips, but I'll just give you information with regard to us as an organization. And if, does, if anybody has got questions that I can answer, then I will take them back to the, to the organization. Um, so just an intro, I've got a very, very simple presentation. Uh, I'm gonna go through who we are and what we do. And then hopefully there'll be some time for some questions and answers as well. So it's gonna be very, very basic, but hopefully informative and insightful for everybody. So who are we? Well, we're the UK's leading charity the look UK's leading charity sorry that looks after the lungs of the nation um, and you might not have viewed of us because until recently we were two separate charities we were asthma UK and the British Lung Foundation however two years ago we merged so in 2020 and I started with the organization last October so I can't really give you background information with regard to the rationale of the merger I would imagine it was for financial reasons and just to have a, a, a a bigger stake and, and, and a larger presence with, with, with within the, the marketplace. Um, then we had a very, very long and friendly name until we rebranded in February this year and we rebranded with Asthma and Lung UK. So we've got a new name, we've got a new logo, we've got new corporate colours. Um, we're, we're just rebranding everything at the moment. So if you do visit the website, you still might see things are kind of separate. Some things are from Asthma UK, some things are from British Lung Foundation. That's because we're in the process of actually just going through uh, uh, the, 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 the website rebrand as well. But although we're, we're, we're kind of a new entity, we have got over a hundred years of campaigning, representing, funding, and working with people that suffer with asthma and lung conditions. Um, so just as a, as, as, as a quick overview, um, I've got a video, like, like I said, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not sort of medically qualified, so I've got a very quick video explaining from one of our uh, expert nurses what asthma is. And cross my fingers now that this will work because it has worked in the past. So if I go down, um, I'll just go to the, and it's a very short but informative video. No, the link not working, Nick. Yeah, is it not working for everybody else? No, it's not. Is it not? No. No, it's not, no. Give me two secs. Um, I'll try it. I'll try it without enlarging the screen, put it on the full screen. Give me two seconds. Is that working now? No, I think um, you, no. you may have to share it from a different um, screen. I, maybe the best thing to do is that we'll attach the link when we send out the slides yeah. this afternoon. So, um, okay, I apologize for that. I, I, I thought there'd be a, a technical gremlin somewhere. Um, anyway, so asthma is quite a common uh, condition in it, one in five adults, so just around about just under five and a half million adults in the UK, and one in 11 children suffer from asthma. The causes aren't, exact known, aren't exactly known, um, but it is linked to um, certain conditions such as premature birth, female hormones, which I'll go on to later, um, that, that's something that, that, that as an organisation we're, we're looking at at the moment. Obesity, uh, a family history, substance exposure, smoking, and the hygiene hypothesis, which is that if you're not exposed to bacteria and viruses when you're very young, your body doesn't learn to respond to, 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 to these foreign bodies. 
So when it when it engages with them at, at, at a later time in life, there, there's, there's almost a, an overreaction, uh, and then that 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 can on, onset asthma and and, and and be a cause of asthma. And asthma attacks are often linked to allergies and triggers. So people generally know and learn what their triggers are. For instance, pollen is a trigger, and particularly summer pollen. Uh, and so much so that you normally get the, the pollen level now in, in the weather forecast, which enables people to, 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 to kind of plan their day. Uh, animal fur, so, and that doesn't mean to say that the person has to be in contact with the animal a lot, uh, very often if they've got quite severe asthma, an asthma sufferer, even just walking into a house where an animal is, is present, the, 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 the kind of animal fur in, in, the, in the air is enough to, to or, or can be enough to trigger an attack, um, pollution and smoke. And again, we'll I'll I'll I'll, I'll kind of discuss that a, a little bit more uh, further on in the presentation. Um, I think I mean there may be people do you know um, at this presentation today that has asthma. Certainly, everybody will probably know somebody that has asthma, uh, and we think that it's a condition that is maybe a little bit of. Uh, an imposition, a little bit difficult to live with, but people don't really think of it as being fatal. But actually, four people die of an asthma attack every day. And we think that two thirds of those deaths could be uh, preventable, or eight out of 12 deaths, uh, which are asthma related, could be prevented. Uh, there's no cause for asthma. Oh, sorry, there's no known cures for asthma. But there are a range of drugs to help people manage and live with their conditions. So generally people use the, the brown and the blue inhalers, which would be the, uh, the, the preventer and the reliever. But if you've got very, very severe um, allergy uh, related asthma, then you can be offered um, biological drugs that are tailored for particular asthma. And actually researchers are, are now beginning to say that we should consider asthmas rather than asthma because there, there are kind of bit variations of it which, which, which are significant. And obviously the next thing that we, we kind of address are lung conditions. And um, this is the third most common cause of death in the UK. Staggering it costs the NHS over nine billion pounds annually. There are 10,000 new diagnoses each week. Every five minutes, someone dies from a lung-related disease, and that works out to 288 people per day. And there's over 700,000 hospital per, uh, admissions per year. And remember, this is for the UK. We know, and data shows, that the prevalence of lung, of lung conditions in the Northeast is one of the worst in the country, if not the worst. Depends how you look at the league table, if you put the worst performing at the top, then we're at the top. If you put the worst performing at the bottom, then we're at the bottom. But lung, lung conditions are more prevalent in the Northeast than any other part of the UK. Therefore, the strain on the NHS, the number of diagnosis, the number of people that, that are dying and the strain on the hospital admissions will be more within the Northeast than any other part of the country, just due to do it, it, its prevalence. Um, so we provide support and advice for people living with over 25 different lung conditions. And as Tim said, this is going to be emailed out. So you can sort of click on these links and, and you, you, you can look at all, all the conditions that, 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 that we offer advice for. And we offer advice for children living with over 20 different lung conditions. Uh, we provide for, we, 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 we provide support as well for people with asthma and lung conditions. And we offer a range of information on topics such as home oxygen therapy, so how to use home oxygen th therapy, the safe way to use it, the safe way to store it, what happens if you're traveling with it, how, how to order it, how to make sure that, that you don't run out of it. Um, advice on traveling abroad, so house insurance, uh, so, so, sorry, um, tra uh, travel insurance, uh, hints and tips to, 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 to keep yourself safe considerations of what different temperatures might have on your condition as well. We signpost people to smoking cessation. Um, we offer advice with regard to um, welfare um, benefits. So what benefits are you entitled to? We assist people with regard to claiming those benefits. And if we can 
we assist people on getting a backdate on, on, on those benefits as well. And then we, we, we offer kind of seasonal um, preventative advice. So what, what, what are the effects of hot weather on your condition? What are the effects of, of, of cold weather on, on, your, on, on your condition? So people can be sort of forearmed and, 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 and prepared and can develop plans. Um, so that's kind of who we are. The next part of the presentation is really about what we do. And we do, we do lots and lots of things, but I've kind of highlighted three key things that we do that, that are kind of outward facing or beneficiary facing. So one of the things we've done, one significant thing we do is research. So we invest in research. And over the last 40 years, we've, aw we've awarded over a thousand research grants and they've told in excess of a hundred million pounds. And they've addressed things like asthma, uh, COPD, um, chronic ob ob obstructive pulmonary disease, me mesothelioma, bronchiectasis, and interstitial lung disease, amongst others. I I've I'm not listed them all here. And research can be very, very expensive. Research can be very, very slow in the fact that it needs a very, very sound evidence base for it, for it to be accepted. It then needs to be accepted by the, the NHS that then needs to be implemented by the NHS or by central government. However, the, the following four things are kind of tangible results that, that, that have happened due to the, the, our investment in research in that we've improved the, the treatment of pneumonia in children and young people. We've reduced the hospital recovery time for people with COPD. We've revolutionized the diagnosis of lung conditions in children. And kind of most recently, we contributed to fighting COVID-19, where we co-funded research to help determine which tests should be used to detect the virus. So the lateral flow test, we co-funded research with regard to which ones are most accurate, which ones are most efficient, which ones are the easiest to use, although you probably wouldn't thank us when you put the swab up your nose or down your throat. But we, we were part of that funding stream because it was a respiratory focused disease. And on the other side of the coin as well, not only do we fund research, but we also act as a conduit between research institutions, or whether that's universities, whether, whether that is actually research institutions, whether that's um, consultants that want to undertake research. And then what we can do is access the beneficiaries that, that, that we know, and we can, we, we can be the, the median between the researcher and potential participants. So if you've got a particular lung condition or a particular type of asthma and you're motivated to get in, in, involved in research, then we can try and find some research that, that, that is currently going on that may be uh, applicable to yourself. And we can also find participants for current researchers as well. And I must stress, there's no pressure for anyone to participate. We simply give that information across. And then if people do decide to engage in the research, then we can support them through that process. So I've got just the research funds that we invested last year, so from 2021 to 2022. Our, our total grant funding budget for research was 3.13 million. We awarded 3.07 million, so we awarded 90% of our budget, which is a, a success within itself. And we allocated grants across three different themes, and we allocated 15 grants in total. So we allocated seven grants with regard to research into mesothelioma. We awarded six grants, research in women and asthma, and we, uh, we awarded two grants looking at respiratory conditions such as interstitial lung disease, bronchiectasis, and uh, constructive, uh, um, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. So on a pie chart, that looks like, so the pink is respiratory, so we invested uh, 1,225,000 into two projects. The orange is women and asthma, and we invested a million pounds into six research project, projects. And the blue is mesothelioma, and we invested 900,000 pounds into seven projects. And the three themes are fairly equally distributed with, with regard to money. But the makeup of the number of grants within those themes then makes quite significant differences with regard to how much each research pro project received. Um, 
The other thing we do, or one other thing that we do, is campaigning. And we advocate on behalf of people with asthma and lung conditions. And we can do that at the local level, so we can assist anybody that thinks that maybe the air quality within their neighbourhood um, is um, detrimental to their lung health. Uh, we do it at a regional level and we do it at a national level as well. So we lobby MPs, we are well connected with regard to the health secretary and the um, the chief health advisor as well, and actually the chief health advisor's report this year focuses on air quality and the damage that that does to 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 um, risk, respiratory systems. Um, and some of the some of the kind of wins we've had with regard to our campaigning are uh, law changes uh, that every pupil within school that has asthma has access to an emergency inhaler if they forget their own within the school. We were part of a consortium and a compact that, that supported the banning of smoking in cars when children are present, which, is, which has become law. Uh, we were at the COP26 summit last year when we were talking about air pollution. And whilst we're aware and we do all we can to be environmentally friendly with regard to air pollution, our kind of angle on air pollution is that poor air and poor air quality has a very, very devastating effect on people's lung health. And actually, I think it was a 11 or 12 year old girl in London had asthma due to air pollution put down as her cause of death. And that's the first time that that's actually um, ever, ever been uh, uh, classified as that. We're looking at women in asthma. And this is quite interesting in that asthma in women is more prevalent. It appears to be more severe and women are more likely to die from asthma than men. And we want to know why. Is it to do with hormones? Is it to do with the menstruation cycle? Is it to do with the menopause? Or are there any other factors? So we're, we're kind of funding some groundbreaking research with, with regard to that and trying to, we probably won't get the, the definitive answers immediately, but starting that research, we feel is, is, is a really important step. And we're also, seeking to stop the asthma related prescription charges and our motto is you shouldn't have to pay to breathe and then when you are breathing if you go to uh, the tap in air, air pollution you should actually be breathing good quality air as well and with a, a cost of living crisis that that is a focus of our campaigning too um the third thing we offer then and this might be of interest to most people there is actually our support services so we offer a huge range of ways in which and mediums in which people can uh, seek advice and support from us as an organisation. So we've got a support and advice helpline uh, that's based in Liverpool. And last year we spoke to 34,000 or we took 34,000 individual calls. Uh, we've got a web community. And we supported over 18,500 people with asthma and over 50,000 people with lung conditions last year. We had over 15 million visits to our website to access health information and health advice. A lot of that was to do with COVID-19 and we had to rapidly become an expert on all things COVID, particularly for very vulnerable people who have got existing asthma and existing health conditions. Uh, we've also got face-to-face -face support groups and throughout the UK at the moment, we've got over 200 of them um, in operation. Um, so if you want to speak to our, our, our helpline, it's 0300 222 and they're over nine in the morning until five in the evening, Monday to Friday, and they're a very friendly bunch. There's a general support service where if you phone up, with a, uh, a question or if you're in a particular that is more medical, then you will then get uh, diverted to our um, respiratory specialist nurses and physiotherapists that, that also man the phones. You can e email us on info at asthma and lung uk dot, uh, dot asthma and lung dot org dot uk, sorry. You can join our web community, and if you do that, you've got access to notice boards. You get links to all of our latest um, YouTube videos, our online information, and our health literature. 
or just access our website uh, with regard to um, any health support that you may need or any service support that you, you'd like to find out about. We also provide online support groups. So we offer a group over Zoom every day of the week um, and our online support groups are as follows. Now I'm going to read these out because these have been changed recently and I just haven't had time to, to, to catch up with them. So on a Monday, we do Motivational Monday, as the kind of uh, clear is in, is in the title. It's on a Monday and it is 10.30 to 11.15. And Motivational Monday is singing for lung health, relaxation, breathing exercises, along with singing. Uh, it starts 10.30 to 11.15. However, if you're new to the session, there's an, in, it, there's an introductory session from 10 until 10.30. And uh, when the email comes through, all those links there are live. Um, so that will allow you to just click on that, that link and, and, and you'll find further information. We run an online support group. Now this is going to resume in September and this is a four week course. So this needs pre-booking because we, we want people to, to, to progress through the weeks one, one to four. It's a, a weekly meeting where we get a guest speaker to offer inspiration, um, inf uh, information, inspire and support information. And they're generally our respiratory specialist nurses or physiotherapists, and they'll give you a demonstration on something like asthma technique or inhaler technique, sorry. And then there's, there's, there's a, um, a question and an answer session as well. Mindful lung, mindfulness, sorry, for lung health is a six week introductory course to mindfulness. And it helps to improve your, your quality of life, reduce emotional distress and reduce fatigue. And you get tastes of mindfulness, med uh, meditation, compassion and support and mindful movement practice. So this isn't really the focus on the physiology of, of your lung condition. It's, it, it gives you, um, I would say, mental skills, mental awareness and resilience to, to, so you can develop techniques so that you can cope a little bit better with the condition that you may have. Um, we do harmonica for lung health. Again, this is a, a six week session where you learn to play folk, country and blues music, as well as learning new breathing techniques to strengthen your breathing and coughing muscles. And there is actually peer reviewed evidence that supports the benefit of learning to play the, the harmonica and the breathing techniques and the deep breathing techniques that you learn when you're when you know when, when, when you are learning those techniques, they are transferable to making breathing breathing easier for people with asthma and lung conditions. We run an international breathe easy group, which is an informal friendly meeting offering lots of information with the occasional speaker, and they range from healthcare advice to someone that may make you laugh. This is very this is a very loose organizer, a very loose group, and it is international. The guy that runs it is based in Wales, so they get people from Canada, they get people from North America, they get people from Europe, all kind of zooming in at seven o'clock our time. And it's very much a social support, a peer support in intervention with lots of shared, shared, shared stories, hints and tips from, from, from other people suffering with lung condition. And finally, we've got Feel Good Friday, which runs every Friday. And it's a Zumba-based um, physical activity session, but it's very progressive. So you can do it standing, you can do it seated. The instructor caters for all people's um, abilities. Um, and what we find with the Friday and the Monday course is, is if you're particularly isolated and you're particularly vulnerable, these, these, these kind of activities are very, very important to people that might not get out of the house over the weekend. So it could be the last time that they have or be in a face-to-face -face conversation over a computer screen, but it might be the last time until oh, the, the you know the, the conversation on Friday might be the last time that they get to speak to somebody until that Monday session. So there's plenty of, 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 of chat and support with within those two groups. We're also we've also secured some funding to, to develop the following groups and support groups with the specialists on bronchiectasis severe lung conditions and long COVID. So they, they will be added to, 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 to that list. But um, if you're on Zoom and if you're watching this, you, are, you obviously are on Zoom, there's something that you can access every, every day of the week uh, starting from September. Um, we also run our face-to-face -face support groups. So these are 
geographically lo located and they're created to be reflective of its membership and we try to form them and we, we try to cultivate them in a way that best serves its, its, its members' needs. They're run by, um, by the membership of the group who are volunteers and then they're supported by a member of staff from Aspen Learn UK. So the group's format and function are, are unique and they develop things that work for them as a group. So there's no sort of absolute blueprint that we demand groups stick to. However, we do ask that there's an element of learning about asthma or, or lung conditions, things like symptom management, triggers, and what people find beneficial. We help each group find inspirational speakers to find me medical speakers, whether it's a nurse, whether it's a physiotherapist, whether it's a researcher, whether it's a consultant. They normally come to speak for about 20 minutes. There's a question and answer session, and then the rest of the time is really up to the group then what what they what what they fill the, the, that time up with. Um, all groups can be accessed either by a, by a clinical referral, so that's a referral from maybe a GP, from a physiotherapist, from a practice nurse, or patients can self-refer. So you don't need to be referred in, into this. You can just turn up into these groups. Um, we're open to carers, family members, and friends, and we're not only open to them, but we really do encourage carers, family members, and friends to attend because that is another peer support network that can be extremely helpful and extremely valuable. However, we do also accept that the, the sort of hour and a half or two hours of, of, the, of, of, of the month could be the only time that they get, or no, the only opportunity that they get that time to themselves. So they can use it as respite care. They can use it to go and do the big shop. They can use it to go and pay some bills. They can use it to go to the bank. They can use it to go to the post, the post office. Or however they want to use that, hour two hours is entirely up to them but they are more than welcome to attend the groups we don't offer an admission fee but we do we do kind of encourage a donation just to cover the cost of the venue via the refreshments and any instructor costs that, that, that might be incurred and all donations are obviously very much appreciated so not only are they do we think that they're, they're kind of good places to go, they, 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 they offer lots of support. There's actually evidence that the University of Kent did an investigation and, and did a study of our support for 2014. And the evidence suggests that our face-to-face, -face, of our face-to-face -face support groups, 87% of the people attending the support group felt less likely to attend hospital due to their lung condition. There's a 42% reduction in end plan GP visits and a 57% reduction in hospital admissions. And people living with a lung condition reported a greater quality of life after six months. So independent evidence suggests that they do work and people get out of it whatever people want to get out of it. If people want that social, that social peer support, then that's absolutely fine. Some of the groups we have do exercise classes. Nothing is, is compulsory. It's entirely up to the individual how much or how little they, they get involved. So in the northeast, we have just established the Newcastle East face-to-face -face support group, and that's a partnership between ourselves, Newcastle NHS Trust, and the British Oxygen Company Community uh, Pulmonary Rehab Nursing Team. So we have a monthly session that lasts two hours. We get expert speakers in to address health-related issues. We get people to give um, benefits advice, people to look at energy efficiency, anything that we feel will be beneficial to that group. We will then uh, consult with that, with, with that group, ask for what it is they want, then it's my job to go and find some, some speakers to, to, to come back to the group. So part of the group is also an exercise session. We've uh, sourced uh, a local uh, exercise instructor who's extremely good at engaging with, uh, with the, the uh, attendees that, that, that we have. There's a big emphasis on the social aspect, so there's an informal peer support and learning. So the, the, the speaker session normally lasts about 40 minutes. The exercise class normally lasts between 30 to 40 minutes, which leaves another sort of 20 minutes, half an hour for refreshments and just for people to have a nap to get to know each other and, and to pass on every information that, 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 that they have. And we meet on the third Thursday of every month. Uh, it's at the Ray Gray Community Centre, which I'll 
include in the email that I send this presentation to Tim. People can, oh, we, we kind of receive referrals from partner organizations of the trust and British Oxygen Gas. We get people that are completing their pulmonary rehab, which is an eight to 10 week program. When they finish that, it's great news that the physiotherapists can refer them on to our support group rather than, you know, uh, giving them quite an emotional and tearful goodbye and there's nothing to actually refer people into. We've got links with community pharmacists within the area that refer people on. GPs can refer people and also practice nurses. But the same as all of our groups, members of the public can self-refer as well. Um, they can give me a call or they can just sit up and everybody's made very, very well. Again, we encourage carers, family members, and um, anybody else we, related to, to the patient who would like to attend. So the future work we're doing in the Northeast, we're currently working with the community and respiratory nursing team in County Durham. So we have to take a consultation with their patients. So we look at the need and the demand for support group in Durham. We, the evidence would suggest, because it's part of the Northeast, that there is, there is a need, there, there is a demand, but actually, how many people would want to turn up? They, you know, the, the statistics might, might, might be saying one thing, but, 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 but people's intention might be something else. So we're working with, with patients that are currently undergoing pulmonary rehab to see whether they would be interested in attending a group. We're also looking at what the uh, kind of group uh, pragmatics would be, such as the frequency, the duration, the location, and the topics of interest. And that gives us an insight then when we look to plan that group, that it, it seems the vast majority of the respondents that, 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 that we receive from the consultation. Uh, due to the size of Durham, we're looking to develop two support groups, one in Chester Street and one in Derwent side. And there's just an offer there that if there's a health professional there or there's a, a group of individuals that would be interested in a support group, you know, a face-to-face -face support group being set up within Northumberland, then I'm sure this model could be in, implemented um, within this part of the Northeast. And thank you very much. I will attempt to answer any questions that may be asked. Thanks, Nick. That's, that's great. Uh, so have we got any questions? Um, are you either put raise your hand or you could uh, uh, put a question in the chat. So, Any questions? Well, I've got a question. Um, how many people would you need to have, especially an interest in Northumberland, to set up a, a, a support group in Northumberland, do you think? The, the one we've got at the moment in Newcastle has been its very early stages. It's only sort of, a, a, I think it's third week in here, two weeks yesterday. And uh, we had six patients and we had one care, so we had seven people. Now, what we've got, we, we kind of appreciate that if people make a donation, that would be very pro, pro, uh, prohibitive. But in the first six months, so we've got some funding that would allow us to run it for about a six to eight month period. By then, hopefully, we'll be into kind of double figures. We might get 20 members with a steady um, attendance rate of between sort of 12 and 15. And then it makes it kind of affordable for, for everybody then that, 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 that are wanting to attend. So I wouldn't be worried about numbers because, because of the links that we make with um, health professionals, you know, digital therapists, practice nurses, and, 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 the, and the people that, 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 that kind of do the, the, the pulmonary rehab in the area. What we find is it makes a difficult conversation um, a little bit less difficult because at the end of the, the eight weeks or ten weeks, I said, "Thanks for attending, hundred percent attendance, well done." Now you're kind of on your own. If they've got a referral destination, which is our support group, it makes that really easy, um, really easy for those individuals, and really easy for, for for the patients as well. So we think it's quite complementary, and and, and um, the response we've got from Newcastle and from County Durham is at last. Because they've heard about what used to be called British Lung Foundation support groups, but they were they never really had a presence in 
in the northeast. Um, and then I, I do lots of promotion work as well, going around community pharmacists, going around GPs. We've got posters up in all GP practices as well. So you know, members of the public that might not be involved within any kind of um, official pro pr protocol can also self-refer as well. Um, there's a question, I think, says where's the group, where is the group session held in Newcastle? It's, it's in the Ray Gray Community Centre. So what I'll do, I'll resend the presentation and I'll put the the uh, the venue name and the postcode as well. Okay, thank you. Um, and then... Uh, oh, okay. So then, Cheryl B, um, have you got a question? All right, um, Cheryl B says, would also appreciate meetings or talks in the Berwick area. Would you record meetings for those who can't attend meetings in person? Yeah, 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 we can. We've got, well, when I send the presentation, I'll, I'll try and send some other links as well with regard to, we've, we've got, We've got so much content on our on our website that is it is unbelievable. So I'll get I'll try and order some links as well. Um, I, I I don't know whether people can list some of the things that they, they that they might be interested in. Uh, then I'll, I'll 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 try and find those out. But I, I will I will wait if you if you're looking for things to watch where you you don't feel that being present is is that important. We've got so much advice and information and, 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 and videos to watch that we that we've recorded over YouTube. We do we do a monthly consultation with our sort of GP who's a who's an asthma and lung specialist. Uh, they're all on YouTube and they they've been recorded right up until the end of last year. So they're act, they're actually quite 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 new um, and, and haven't dated too much. But yeah, I mean if if anybody wants anything um from myself then i'll include my email address and yeah me passing things on isn't isn't uh, um an issue at all okay we got any more questions for anyone no i think, I think that's all. thanks joe you're nodding if you just please say thank you that's great <laughs> Right, so we'll, we'll draw a close now. So thank you very much, Nick. Um, I hope that was useful and, and informative to everyone. And uh, we'll be on next month. We've got a representative from the Stroke Association for our next month meeting, which is always the second Friday in um, in the month, at 1 p.m. 1 p.m. till 2 p.m. So thanks so much for attending, everyone, and see you again another time. Bye. Bye. -bye.